All right, Level Engine here with yet another Dueling Book Duel. This is both being done with custom cards, cards that either the people who are like playing their respective decks have made themselves, or they could be like also just a bunch of cards they picked up from like cards that were made by other users. Or of course, they could also just be like cards that actually exist in Yu-Gi-Oh. And on top of this, this is a tag duel, so it's two people versus another two people. And we're just gonna like start the replay right here. I definitely remember like being like instructed to go first. And I ended up getting the first move of the game. So this is actually a deck I very recently put together. Another like a deck that uses both like cards that actually exist in Yu-Gi-Oh plus a bunch of custom ones. Yeah, I kind of got inspired from one of the games I actually played and raided like a couple days ago, or actually played against Fish, or as the spelling would suggest, it's pronounced Goatee, but it's not pronounced Goatee, it's actually pronounced Fish. So I do my Oyster Meister Normal Summon here. I, I, okay, that says Oyster Meister, by the way. So I'm going to start making my plays with this fish-themed deck. Yes, every single monster in this deck I recently made is fish-type. This condition, this drawback, doesn't really, like, that's not relevant at all because I built the entire deck of fish monsters. A lot of which can just search each other out. And then there was like another archetype I picked up to go along with some of the quote unquote goatee cards. So basically waveforms. Yeah, Blockmaster251 made his own little archetype. They're all fish types. Some of them are tuners, some of them are non-tuners. They also play into synchro summoning, like the goatee archetype. And then this is part of another like custom fish archetype that also has its own synchro plays. And those two archetypes I previously mentioned also have to do with banishing cards, interestingly enough. So this deck is just very much capable of powering out like high-level synchro monsters like it's nothing. And then this card is pretty bonkers if you ask me. You can special summon as many water and normal monsters as possible from your deck or graveyard, but preferably just fish them all out of the deck. No pun intended. So that's why I have this random vanilla 2k beat stick level 4 here. Because I would much rather have that in the deck to just special summon. And not really just because it can't do that much in the hand. And yes, apparently, like, this is not a once per turn here, this effect either. If a water monster special summon to your field, gain a thousand life points, this is not even once per turn. So every summon I'm gonna make, because also my entire custom deck I recently made here is all water attribute, is gonna give our team an extra 1,000 life points. This card, this upstart ninja is also in here, but I'm probably just gonna do like another Yu-Gi-Oh! Dueling Book live stream, and I guess towards the end of it, try and get in some games with the fish deck I recently made. And then I guess also just show off the whole deck and explain like, what I play in it and why. So, I guess I'll just also say spoiler. My partner is playing Dogmatica. I'm playing, like, basically crossovers with a bunch of, like, custom fish archetypes and also a few goatee cards. Okay, I can't just look at my own extra deck in this replay here. Yeah, there's, like, one goatee synchro in here. And one of the opponents is playing Danny Phantom Ghosts. Yes, as in like the kids Saturday morning cartoon that started airing in like 2004. I, I knew I recognized the art style. I, I knew I recognized these cards as soon as I saw them. I mean, especially Ember here because you are literally, you will literally remember her name. Yep.
I'm tempted to just fast forward past a bunch of the summons here. Yeah, so those are two level fours, and that's a synchro summon. I mean, I guess I maybe only remembered like a few of the Danny Phantom characters. And only a few of the episodes. Yeah, so like, they put this on my field to special summon like two of their own, like Danny Phantom ghost monsters to their field. I didn't even remember that we were instructed to bush banish a card from our deck face down. I didn't even remember like that part of the game. And spoil alert. Okay, which card said like Okay, this is the card that did the banishing. Would add the card back during the third standby phase after this effect activation. I try to remember if we got that far in the game during the third standby phase or during the third standby phase. Okay, it's probably just counted like between like all four players, the different standby phases. Spoiler alert, we completely forgot about clockwork all over here. <laughs> yeah, one just like wondering what the hell the die roll was for. Also just like seeing like what, what this guy summoned, I, I got a little scared. Just looking at Vortex's text box. Not so much the fact he's a kind of a, just a creepy looking ghost. But more so like this text box. There's just so much shit crammed into here. It's just crazy. So yeah, there's basically like one effect here for every single like attributal monster in the game except for Divine. I, I, I think I honestly kind of just stopped reading like halfway down the text box. And then there's something about special summoning a vortex tokus or token or whatever. And then just the die roll, like, just picks a random attribute among six. Well, the six attributes in the game that aren't divine. And then this is definitely where I started getting a little bit nervous that I might just... We might just straight up lose. When this card is synchro summoned, until the end of your turn, neither player can target any Danny Phantom Ghost Monsters with card effects. Plus, they can't be destroyed, and this is also a once per turn Amina Gate. Plus, not going to be that easy to beat over 3,500 attack either. Also, Ember just sets her level to like 2. And maybe like one other monster. Prince Aragon, right? The Dragon Tyrant. This, this, this boss monster does not fuck about. Can only be Synchro Summoned. Unaffected by card effects except for like the Danny Phantom ghost cards so that that basically means like anything we have on us just can't even affect it I also didn't put any cards into the fish deck that could get around the unaffected by card effects either so that would just leave us with running it over in battle, most likely. Which one reduces the attack and defense? I don't know if it's Dorothea or... Pfft. Okay, that one. <laughs> Sounds like Delta's about... Wizzy's partner's about to fall asleep. <laughs> Tribute token. Yeah, in case 4,000 attack on an unaffected monster was not enough. This guy is also perfectly capable of just boosting his attack and defense. And on top of that, he can just do a second attack in case, I don't know. Can attack twice during each battle phase this turn in case, I don't know. 6,000 attack and unaffected by card effects just isn't good enough. Thank god we have like 16,000 life points to start because that is typically how, like, that's typically tag duel rules. Which is 8,000 life points times 2 because there's like, yeah, 2 players. But yeah, 
all of our monsters have 1500 attack points less. This thing has 6000 attack and it can swing twice, so... Yeah, those life points get lost pretty quickly in this turn. Also, yeah, like, both of these synchro monsters I powered out can be run over in battle, so... Anyway, at least they get to stay, so at least we still have some more presents. I think we lose. Regardless, I definitely try something to try and win, despite the 6k unaffected beat stick. Yeah, so my partner Wesley was running Dogmatica. And also decided to put it into his deck, like... The new level 12 Dogmatica Ritual monster before we're actually gonna get it in the West here. It's gonna come out in Darkwing Blast in, like, I think three weeks. I didn't even catch this, like, invalid play because... We basically, we did this duel, like, very late at night. I, I think it might have been, like, about 1 in the morning at this point in time where, like, Wesley finally started to make his first, take his first turn because both me and Wizzy, like, took freaking long to just do our turns. I mean, like, this is, like, custom card Yu-Gi-Oh! Even regular Yu-Gi-Oh! in 2022, like, sometimes people can just take out the 10 minutes to do their turns. But, pre-preparation of rights reads as follows. I literally, like, didn't even pay attention to this until, like, I just watched the replay back earlier. Add one ritual monster, well, add a ritual spell. Then a ritual monster from your deck or graveyard to your hand, whose name is specifically mentioned on that ritual spell. So, this card would have to have White Nadir Abdomatica specifically written on it. Which it does not, it just says any dogmatic or ritual monster. So yeah, cards like Advanced Ritual are to let you summon, I think, any ritual monster from hand or something, and just dump normal monsters from deck. And there's probably, like... I'm, yeah, Medionis Tritron's gotta be another such card that just lets you ritual summon any, like... I think? Any ritual monster? So those kinds of cards you can't just put in your hand with this, but... It was one in the morning and I wasn't paying much attention. And then you send eight extra deck monsters to the graveyard, and the effect reads as follows. Because the opponent chose to resolve not this effect, which would have just... I think Aragon would have actually probably been shuffled back in the extra deck if they did pick the first effect on White Nadir here. Because the way this is worded, interestingly enough, says that they return all fusion, synchro, exceeds, and link monsters so they control to the extra deck. Yeah, comparing this to, like, a similar card that just makes a player do something and not so much have a card effect do something to their monster. Yeah, evenly match banishes cards face down. And it gets around the whole unaffected by card effects BS because in the case of, say, evenly matched, the player themselves is removing the cards from the field. It's not like any card effect that is doing it. So yeah, let's just say, like... I had an empty board, and preferably, let's just say that there was one token on the opponent's board. And then I go, battle phase with no cards on board, and battle phase, play evenly matched, and assuming, like, it doesn't get negated or anything. Because tokens actually can't be banished face down, they'd be forced to keep the token, and banish everything else face down. And yes, this is the player themselves doing the act of just removing the card from the field. So the, that, the... Basically, like, that completely ignores the fact that a card would be unaffected by card effects, if it is unaffected. The player removing it themselves, just, that gets ignored. And then here's where I'm pretty certain that only four cards get chipped out of their extra deck by White and Deer here. So this is the first effect that's being resolved. They send one card from their hand, and Wizzy discarded the card, so... That was like one of the four cards they need to just dump, just gone. For every two cards in their extra deck, they send one card from their hand or extra deck to the graveyard. So I could just count like two cards in this nine card extra deck four times. There's one left over, so we would. I would. I, I was like 99% certain that to just determine the number of cards you just mill out of the extra deck, 
or like the scarf in the hand to just no one last say. I basically was like 99% certain that's 9 divided by 2 and then you just round down to the nearest whole number because you can't like just dump half a card into the graveyard. And then I just manually inspected each and every single one of these extra deck cards to see if, I don't know, maybe any of them had like, if this is sent to graveyard, do this effect. Hmm, not half bad looking, I'll admit. Paulina Phantom. For every two cards in your extra deck, you send one. And that's exactly what Wizzy did. Well, one from hand and three from extra deck, because you can send from hand too. I'm like, nah, that's good, because I'm like 99% sure this is like the correct answer to this question here. I mean, it was pretty late, so maybe I was just, like, crazy myself. I don't know. When you say every two cards to you mean cards you have double of? I was, like, really confused there. It gives a choice of sending one from the hand or extra deck. I already sent one from hand, and then, yeah, just three from extra deck to just get the four. And then this is where I just basically like had my Discord open in another tab and just basically copied like this white Nadir here, copied this into Dueling Book asking for the ruling. I'm reading this, I'm reading this line correctly here. Is this just me or am I reading this correctly? Like, nine cards in the extra deck. We divide that by two and we round down. The opponent's gotta send like four cards total from hand or ED, right? Send one card from your hand to graveyard, so then you have to send eight more from your extra deck to the graveyard. So this guy apparently thinks that for every card in your extra deck, you gotta send, like, that card to the graveyard. Let's just say if, like, you, the opponent had an empty hand and you resolved this effect. And for some reason they chose, like, the second effect here. This would imply that they lose their entire extra deck, which... Then again, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! these days... <laughs> Konami's just pushing out broken cards left and right. Like, they made Dragoon, like, sometime in 2021, I think. And then, not too long after, it was just clearly apparent that they did not learn from their mistake of Dra Dragoon, just team being too easy to summon from the deck, and then made an even, like, easier to summon, like, boss monster that basically anyone could run. And then on top of that, if they had an empty hand on, like, a following turn, they basically got, like... A pot of greed in the graveyard just ready to be used. So a hard to out boss monster that's just blowing up one card a turn. And on top of that, like a free pot of greed. Which is a card that is banned because just a free two cards with like no condition just. And literally every deck would play it if it could. Like it would be basically just let's say if pot of greed was at one, it would be like well, assuming, like, everyone wants to run 40 cards, but Modern Day Yu-Gi-Oh! is not that simple. I mean, in a GOAT format where we have Pot of Greed at 1 and Graceful Charity, I think it's, like, build a 30-hit card deck with Pot of Greed and Graceful Charity, so... Already a little bit less room to be creative. And then this is also, yeah, like, where I'm just telling them... Trying to tell him to, like, not just waste, like, Dogmatica Maximus effect on a card that's unaffected by basically anything we have in our decks. And then I'm just like, oh no, what are you doing? You cannot kill this. If you had a Guru, you should have just sent that because you can at least draw a card off that. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's 6k. Thesis is there to stay. And then something with him. And then finally Delta gets to play after... Okay, how long has this game gone on so far up to this point? Okay, so I took about, yeah, like five minutes to do my first turn. Okay, how long did the Danny Phantom player take to do their turn? 
This went on for like 50, no, 10 minutes, give or take. And then we sp ended up spending most of the Dogmatica player's turn just trying to confirm, like, what the second effect on White Nadir of Dogmatica actually means. Even though I was 99% sure that, like, I had in interpreted it correctly, but still. For a bit, Wesley seemed to be insisting that it was you send nine cards and not four. Okay, so how long did the, okay, like, how do you use this effect go on for? Yeah, so we declared, yeah, so, no, Wesley declared White and Deer Dogmatica effect right around 90 minutes in. Yeah, this lasted a good, like, if there's nine cards in the extra deck, then I can make four groups of two cards each, and then there's, like, a remainder of one, so we have to just, like, yeah. We only make four groups because there's a remainder. <laughs> and that lasted nearly nine whole minutes. Okay, we were like basically like, at least I was up at like one in the morning. And I actually wanted to go to work for like 10.30. It takes me also about an hour and a half to get there. So I had plans to wake up at eight. So I got a good six hours of sleep. But why do I feel like it was kind of worth it? Because we, we got an interesting replay to like to share here. Yeah, so that turn certainly took its time. <laughs> and then I really, we never really got to see too much of Delta's cards because both what I had and also even, maybe even more so like what, with what Wizzy had just kind of overshadowed nearly everything else that was played this game, if you ask me. So the servant cards, I only got to see like three of, and then just a few like staples, including Quaking Mirror Force, assuming that doesn't just get blown up before like our monsters attack. Oh yeah, Pot of Reed to draw two cards. Speaking of which, this does, yeah, that. Just to take the top two cards of your deck and put them in your hand. Probably the simplest card in the whole game. A normal summon and pass. Not even gonna like just try and run anything over with the four. This 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 the six k beat stack. And then it was finally back to my turn, where I decided I would actually see if I can out a six k unaffected by all card effects beater. I figured I'd definitely go looking for something. I start with pot of avarice to mainly just reset the extra deck. To reset the link line in my extra deck so I can just do all my link summons again. I did reread some of my cards over, thinking, like, okay, maybe I, like, misplayed, like, accidentally cheated, like, once in this game. So I watched the replay, and then, like, what I do here, I literally cannot believe it, like, what I do here. Yeah, this is basically, like, the water version of. Well, these are like the water versions of, yeah, Allure of Darkness. Draw two, banish a water monster out of your hand, but... I promise you, this wasn't 100% intentional. And then I'm just like also trying to decide, like... Do I put my monsters in attack or defense position? Oh, and then I run into a Dark Sanctuary here, which just negates my attack. Or tries to, because I have a negate on board. Yeah, this card from just a little bit of, like... The few games I did play with the new fish deck, this card's pretty, pretty bonkers. Yeah, sure it bashes itself off the field, but literally the beginning of the next turn it comes right back. To then just be ready to basically like stop another card again. And on top of that, that can easily just be used to like dodge removal. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm basically just digging into my extra deck, looking for a way to just overpower the 6k beater. Prince Aragon, like, up here. 
And then, yeah, this just lets me, like, just get some fish out of my deck. One of which gets special summoned to the field. And this is not supposed to be something I can do. It's a level 6. Okay, at least I caught that mistake. But <laughs> I, I missed the more egregious one where I literally just didn't banish, like, one of the cards out of my hand and ended up just actually using it, which I wasn't supposed to have it. <laughs> I was not supposed to have that other water monster. And then I'm basically just summoning, like, monsters left and right, one way or another. This guy basically is just, like, a free body I can just pull right out of the extra deck by just banishing cards in my graveyard that typically are just, like, already there most of the time anyways. Yeah, just one of these random waveform tuner monsters that have, like, I think a good, like, five or six of these in a deck and just any normal spell, which... Definitely load this deck up with normal spells to be able to just be able to easily summon all the waveforms because it just takes like one normal spell for them to really get going and there's a lot of go good ones to pick from. <laughs> Definitely gravitating towards the ones that just basically like replace themselves. And then I basically just ended on this here. Who gives this gives itself and like the rest of the water monsters on my board a hundred attack for each water monster banished in either graveyard and I think this I think this video is gonna be long enough already but it started at three thousand attack and I said that it's at fifty two so I counted like I must have counted like one two three four five six seven and we kind of just forgot this was face down so it actually shouldn't count so it should have been one hundred attack less. I assuming we count the one that I counted by mistake, there would be like enough water monsters in here that there'd be 22 water monsters total in my graveyard in my banished pile, so 5200 attack. Wait, that would also come back too, right? And the shift fairy of the fish comes back as well. During like Standby phase of the next turn after this card was banished, you can just special summon it back. Okay, so after Wizzy's extremely explosive first turn they took, they really weren't playing that much more. Me on the other hand basically just continued to like add to our board. <laughs> End phase banish. And then I just quickly reread the card and realize that I actually cannot do that. Because, yeah, I basically did this on. Yeah, I did that on my main phase two, then pass turn to Wizzy. So, on Wizzy's turn, at any point in Wizzy's turn, should not be able to use this effect. And then I just stopped myself and told him, like, never mind, put it back. Miss Red, the title whale, can't actually banish. I mean, Wesley could have just removed this vortex here, but no, he just literally passes his turn. <laughs> Could have at least removed the vortex. Yeah, one of the, like the many effects in the Gettysburg address here. Oh yeah, this one. Yeah, welcome to custom card Yu-Gi-Oh. I mean, even just regular Yu-Gi-Oh, like, it's not too uncommon to find, like, cards that are basically just, like, short essays with how many words are on them. And yeah, when we're also adding in custom cards, people just make whatever the fuck they want. And on top of that, like, there's four players in this game instead of the typical two. Like, that basically just cranks up, like, this just cranks up the complexity of the game up to 11. And then, yeah, here, I just banished two monsters out of my graveyard. Because I did activate, like, the waveform guys are a normal spell. Which randomly rips a... Wait. Was I even able to do that? Hang on a minute. If you control... Wait, I might not have even been able to do this. I'd have to rewind and see, though. 
because these aren't waveform monsters. That's not. That's not one. That's not one. I might have literally just cheated again. Yeah, because this is what I want to ultimately go into. Because I figured Godia the Deep Beyond could beat over the Prince Aragon here. And then I forget, like, what one of my own cards does, too. Yeah, I think right around this point, it might have been, like, 1.30 at night. Expecting by this point that I'm probably just going to be, like, getting six hours of sleep before I go to work tomorrow. So I want to negate... Yeah, at this point, honestly, I am just, like, trying to just push for game. Push for, like... Not necessarily game, but just push for a board state where we're probably just going to beat them the next turn anyway. So, I just summon the Goaty the Deep Beyond with like 9100 attack. Since at this point we kind of like 14 total banished monsters. And then like also the 2100 attack boost to all my water monsters from Lunar Tidal Whale over here. Summing up like 21 banished and or like dead water monsters. So putting Goaty here at 9100. So I just go for a Hail Mary attack on Prince Aragon, the 6k unaffected beats deck. Wanting into a quick play spell, I just negate. And then this is where I realized I completely, 100% forgot about the field spell on their side. So at that point I figured, like, we'll just let it resolve. And it lands heads, which means the attack is negated and we take... Half 9100 damage. 4550. Then thinking about this when I went to bed, really wasn't the feels good moment that I basically had not just one copy, but two copies of the Okosongi card, which reads as follows Banish one fish monster from Hanfield or Graveyard, special summon one fish monster from your graveyard. Yeah, it's another card somebody else, like, made. It's not a really good card. Okopani Okosongi. So, yeah. One fish monster banish it from Hanfield or Graveyard. There's a lot of fish in the graveyard, so obviously would have just taken out one of those. To revive Abyss Lord Neptune over here. And then would have had a, just another, like, one negate. To basically stop another, like, one of the opponent's cards from going through. Which would have definitely made it easier to just push for a game, but... We got to a point where pretty much there was like nothing really we could do to just win. That's another Danny Phantom Ghost, which can just be tributed to Aragon. And yeah, by the way, the attack gained is not until end of turn either. Yeah, the 6,000 attack basically just stayed, and the, the extra attack from Vortex will also just was also going to stay, like, until, like, we died. And can attack twice. And I wasn't even thinking about, like, the banish a monster from field or graveyard to just gain life, basically, just threw in the towel here. I basically just wanted to go to bed, so... I mean, I, I think I cheated, like, twice this game by mistake. I mean, I feel like the allure of seas not banishing a water monster was bad enough, but I think I've also might have activated a spell card I was simply not supposed to use. And then just completely forgot about... Okay, you can see these. This card here, this card. Could have just revived one of the Omni and the Gates from my graveyard to just have another resource on board. If I was even technically able to reach this board state in the first place, which... Maybe, like, no, I couldn't have reached this board state, actually. Let's just assume that maybe I could. But realistically, I'm thinking I couldn't have attained that board state. Because I didn't use one of these to just add a negate to the board. And we kind of just accepted, like, the invalid game states on my, my end. That this, this, this entire game was decided by one coin flip. Good chance we would have basically just pushed through the unaffected beat stick and then just completely, like, maintain dominance over the board for the rest of the game. And then just the next turn, push for game, if not this turn. But, 
not be able to run that over and then just left Wizzy like window of opportunity to just power this up to 9,000 attack and then just even if like these like even if this doesn't die in battle still we were just dead in the water here didn't even think about the whale either just try and like gain life points to just save my ass just no I just want to like go to bed <laughs> was kind of done on my end. That dragon lasts until the end. <laughs> Lol. Unaffected by card effects, it shouldn't be that hard for it to last at the end. 